Let's give you a little bit of the, you know, what the hardware looks like. This is our PISA focus, and I'd like to go through uh, some of the elements of, of the PISA, including the EVAP catalyst, with this thing we call the air induction system hydrocarbon trap. We'll talk a little bit about the engine, um, a secondary air system we use, and a bit of fuel tank. This is actually the engine. It's a two-liter, four-cylinder Duratec um, dual overhead cam, um, 9.7 to 1 compression ratio. Um, to, uh, to get the catalyst lit off, to get it efficient as quickly as possible, so we don't that that initial increase we had, we use uh, something currently called an electric air pump. And what it does, it actually takes air during probably the first 20, 20 or the first 60 seconds of operation. And it puts a little extra air in the exhaust stream after the uh, uh, air has come out of the uh, exhaust manifold. And what that does is it controls the air-fuel mixture that we're sending to the catalyst system, and it makes it heat up much quicker. The whole, the whole trick is how quickly can you get your catalyst hot? Once it's hot, it's very, very efficient. When it's cold, it's not very good. So this is a device that helps us get some incremental air down there that uh, increases the... Um, the temperature in the catalyst. Think about anybody ever do any uh, any welding or you know as soon as you turn the oxygen on that thing turns bright blue. Kind of the same principle. So then we send it down this uh, the exhaust system. Um, up close we have a couple of catalysts. We have um, catalysts or ceramic substrates. This one the first brick and there's actually two different uh, catalysts in there. There's ceramic substrates. This one first one's 900 cells per inch. So there's 900 little cells in the ceramic substrate. The second brick's 400 cells per inch. And we coat it with lots of uh, very expensive metals, platinum, palladium, and rhodium that cost hundreds or in some cases thousands of dollars an ounce. And that, uh, getting that close coupled and getting that hot reduces the amount of uh, hydrocarbons and NOx that flow through. We have a downstream catalyst as well, a um, little bit less precious metal, primarily addresses the NOx emissions. So this one up here, we're trying to get hot as fast as we can to gobble up all the hydrocarbons. This one down here um, handles the uh, primarily the NOx. Fuel system. Um, again, we said we got to control all these vapors. We don't want them leaking out, so we don't fail this, uh, this shed test. So we start with this tank, steel, low permeability. It's not nothing's going to leak through steel. Um, we get steel fuel lines low permeation vapor lines, the seals, very important, we put the fuel, fuel delivery module into the tank, you got to seal that, uh, carbon canister to capture these vapors that we then take out front and purge. So this is really kind of the guts of making sure we pass this 54 milligrams. We actually take kind of this portion of the fuel system out, mount it on this rig and shove it in this shed and bake it for a couple days. Another interesting place that we have uh, fuel vapors sneak out is um, when the engine shuts down, the injectors might drip a little bit of fuel into the intake manifold, and then that vapor wants, wants to kind of work its way back out through the clean air box and back into the shed. So we have this, uh, we have a hockey puck in here, um, it's called a hydrocarbon trap. It's actually a steel mesh coated with a, a material that absorbs hydrocarbons. So when we shut the vehicle down, as the vapors start migrating back out, they get captured in this little hydrocarbon trap. And they get stored there. And the next time we run the car, they actually get sucked out of the hydrocarbon trap and put back in the en engine where they burn. So. Um. <laughs>